Welcome back, everyone, to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today I have one of my best friends in the world, Jorge here. How's it going, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> I'm excited because we've been doing a whole bunch of videos. There's a bunch here on the Dynet YouTube, and I'm always excited when I have awesome IoT devices, just like this one here from Wilderness Labs, the Meadow. This is the Project Lab, correct? Correct, yes. Now, this is cool because we've been doing a bunch of demos, a bunch of different videos, and this is a really awesome setup here where this has a little sensor here and I can see how much water I have in it and it updates in real time. But you know, Jorge, I ordered my shipment for this, but I don't have it yet because I've just <laughs> ordered it. Now, what happens if I don't have IoT devices? I don't sit around. Can I start developing? Is there a solution out there today well, that we yeah, can do? Well, I got great news for you. Yeah, you don't necessarily need Meadow right now. You can just start digging into um, using Meadow and just using your computer. Um, we have this amazing thing called Meadow Windows, cool. and we can actually simulate um, Meadow running on your, on your Windows machine. So in this session that I would like to talk to you about is, you know when the development cycles, when you're doing mobile development that you run, you have to transfer, then boot up the, the, the app, and then you see, you see the screen and see how it looks. Yeah. And you have to go that constantly. And so with Meadow, it's also the, the, same, the same development loop. Yeah. Um, but using Meta Windows, you can actually speed that up because we're using your Windows resources oh, cool. or your computer resources, and you can also see their, your UI much faster. So you don't necessarily need to have Meta, but you can also you create a, like a, you you create a display that it will be the same dimension resolution of your project lab, for oh, for cool. example, and then you can run and you can see your UI immediately. So I'd like to walk you through that. Yeah, That's absolutely. Okay. That's fantastic because like I. I'm on a plane quite often and about to be in a little bit here and I could start developing today. So what do we have going For on? For sure, yeah. So let's first, uh, I'm gonna show you how this works in action. So if I run this application and let me zoom in here for a bit. Wow. And here we have, we have that same display that we have here on the table, the project lab. Wow. It's right now running on my computer, um, which is that. pretty exciting, yeah. Boom. And not only not only this is just rendering um, the, uh, the 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 UI how it looks we're actually doing some simulation as well so we're con we're actually emulating different temperature humidity to try to see like different scenarios like what if I get more digits and how would the UI look like so I can accommodate all those scenarios that makes sense because obviously it's not a real IoT device it's just the dis display so you're sort of mocking out then right the different sensors that would be on there exactly oh cool yeah. So we say we step into the code. Um, we just basically for this project, we basically need uh, two NuGet packages. Well, one will be Meadow Windows, which is required. We need to use. We're going to use um, our Windows resources to run the Meadow um, Meadow OS, and we also need the Meadow Foundation displays WIM forms, mm. which is like um, it's the library that will emulate um, to run a display that will have the capabilities to run micrographics, which is our in-house graphics library that is for Meadow. Oh, cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Very nice. So if we look at the code and you see the display controller here, um, this is actually the same code that we would use and it will run on Meadow. So oh, this we, is like, so it's, so, you even, so it's the code that would actually run here for like the display. Exactly. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So there's, we have, you know, Meadow Foundation color. We have things for background and foreground. And then we have all these different primitives to do, gra uh, to do um, drawings using the graphics library. Here we're doing uh, micrographics, we're instantiating a micrographics object, mm. which we're then with that object, we'll start drawing things like text and shapes and all that sort of fun stuff. And so we're specifying here the current font um, that we have. To, we have over 10 or 20 uh, types of fonts here. Oh, wow. And so that's a quick example here, you know? So I'm running the application right now, you can see the font and the the font and the the background being black and white, but maybe we can play with it. We maybe we can make a, like a dark theme kind of thing, right? So instead, we can just do black for the background and white for the foreground. And I'll just do these two edits here, and then I just run the application, and in a matter of seconds, you can now see the UI running. Very you know? cool. So it just saves you so much time of uh, waiting the, the file to be transferred on to the device and then boot up the system, the Meta OS, and then finally run the application. Um, this saves you a lot more time. And ultimately, when you're happy with your UI, 
you can just copy all this code and you can throw it into your device and run it into your meadow. And then what you see here is what you'll get over there as well. So that's very cool. Now, in this instance, we you said you were mocking out those services. Like, how would you architect the application and then put in the real device sensors? Is it just interfaces or something? Or yes, what's the exactly. Recommendation? Yeah. So we'll create. Um, so what in this case, I created a, a range sensor. Um, Yes, here we go. We got the simulated distance sensor. It's mm. a class that I just whipped together to just make this happen. Yeah. Um, and so I don't have, there. there is no simulated sensor yet. But if I create this driver, for example, it, it I'm extending from an I range finder, which is our category of all our distance sensors that we are, that we have in the real world. Yeah. And then we can mock up things like, you know, when we're reading, um, when we're doing some readings for the measurements, we can do some, you know, I'm getting random value, gen generate random values, but within reason. So make sure that I'm not making like one centimeter and then a meter or things like that. It'll just yeah. kind of mock it something into the ballpark. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so basically, it will be the same primitives, and the APIs will be looking very similar to what you'll have on Meadow and in, in the Meadow device. So you can you can almost like start making all your application using your Windows machine, and ultimately. You you get rapid development cycles this way, and then you occasionally you'll deploy onto your Meadow application to yeah. do the validation and testing, make sure that it's working as expected. That's very cool, and I see that I rangefinder is actually coming from the peripheral. So like that's the same interface that these actual devices and peripherals use. Exactly. So exactly. So really, at the end of the day, I'm thinking in my mind, in my startup code of my application, that I'm just saying, oh, if I'm in desktop simulator mode, basically pull this mocked class, else this sensor, this real sensor, right? Exactly. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's kind of like the point um, of you know running or trying to make your application running with Windows devices. And you, you can even go further that if you don't have a Meadow device, you can use a real life IO expander oh, like wow. the FT232. And that ha even has a USB-C connector. So you just plug Whoa. in your Windows machine to this um, little I/O expander, and then you can start connecting with real things. Whoa! And then you run Meadow here, and like Meadow on your machine, and and you can also control real hardware things using a, a real I/O expander connected on your computer. So, oh, that's really cool. So yeah. then it goes beyond the simulation. Exactly. Actually, so you're yeah. bridging now, even like getting even closer to getting to the end product of about running your application on a Meadow device. That is very, very cool. I'm yeah. excited to try this out because mine's in the mail. I heard <laughs> Brian is making me a custom <laughs> Platinum Deluxe Edition. No, I'm just kidding. Um, just whatever's in the stores I'm, I'm excited to get. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to install everything, get all set up, and we'll put links to everything below. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for showing cool. this off. Really Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate yeah. it. Awesome, and thanks for all of you for tuning in. Like I said, if you're interested in all of this or anything else in the world of Meadow and IoT with .NET, I'm going to put a link in the show notes below to all the amazing things here on the channel, beginner videos, Meadow stuff, .NET con stuff, all these great things. So definitely check it out. And of course, if you're first time here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and jam that notification bell so you stay up to date with all the things right here on the .NET YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thank you.